Michael Andretti has called on Roger Penske to sell IndyCar. Michael Andretti is absolutely tired of Roger Penske and Penske Entertainment dragging their feet when it comes to growing and promoting IndyCar. At this week at St. Petersburg on Friday, he called on Roger Penske to sell off IndyCar if he's not going to invest the money that is required to take IndyCar to the next level. There's a bit of a power struggle going on here. Probably make for a great HBO series. I do like to envision the uh, Sway and Kanye West clip when he was at SiriusXM and Kanye's yelling at Sway going, you don't have all the answers, Sway. To go you ain't got the answers, answers man. You ain't yeah. got the answers. I assume that's probably Roger Penske yelling at Michael Andretti just in a much lower tone of voice and probably sound a bit more cryptid like you don't have the answers michael because he is like 88 years old at this point he's getting up there in age and he doesn't know how to grow the series and michael said that indycar needs a hundred million dollar investment in order to grow this series and so that's something that roger penske is just not going to do sure he's a multiple time billionaire but he's not putting that much money into this series instead he just wants to reinvest the money that the series brings in basically through IMS, through the Indianapolis 500, as well as the money that the NASCAR races there bring in. Other than that, like, eh. It's always good to have the owners of the sport also speak out as well. We've certainly never seen this happen before, have we? Where the owners get mad at the series, do something a little irrational, maybe create a breakaway series, call it something like, I don't know, the championship auto racing teams and have their own series. Never seen that. History never repeats itself. Why would they do that? Just a thought, though. Outside of that, though, Penske has a massive problem on their hands here. Since acquiring the sport in 2019, they've done very little to actually grow the sport. Everything that Penske Entertainment has done with IndyCar has been reactionary. There's nothing that's happened with them that's been forward thinking. And since 2019, sure, they revamped IMS. Absolutely great. They kept the sport afloat during 2020. Appreciate that wholeheartedly. But since then, they haven't really done anything. IndyCar remains the best kept secret of motorsport because they have no idea how to promote it. Their social media presence is absolutely horrid. The same graphics that they have, which are just the Penske perfect corporate graphic package. It's just, it's mind numbing how bad it is. And honestly, I will say this, this weekend at St. Pete, the graphics that they put out for St. Pete so far, phenomenal, great. Keep doing things like that. The standard package that they had been doing was just devoid of any sort of personality, a vibrance of anything. It was just cold and boring, much like Roger Penske. Sure, the guy's a billionaire, but when it comes to growing the series, he's done a really bad job. And Penske Entertainment has taken L after L after L. That's loss after loss after loss for all of the boomers out there. Each and every time they tried to do something. They thought they were going to land Ferrari as the third manufacturer. That was never going to happen. Ferrari was just using them for leverage. And we all saw it, but apparently the people at 16th and Georgetown didn't see it. They got duped by motorsport games. They lost Texas. They lost the streets of Nashville. They're now on an oval 40 minutes away, which according to Marshall Pruitt, one owner called him this past week, invented for 10 minutes, and was furious about the move from the streets of Nashville over to the oval, mainly because they have to call their sponsors now and be like, hey, we thought we were going to be in this really fun city, and so we're going to be in Lebanon, Tennessee, in the middle of a field, not anywhere near Broadway, which is really unfortunate. They abandoned the hybrid and the hybrid component, which will now be maybe coming in midpoint this year, but it was supposed to be part of a new engine formula that they were going to have. Completely abandoned that because they couldn't land a new manufacturer or at least a third engine supplier at the very least here. So it just seems like it's L after L and everything, like I said, is reactionary. There's nothing that is proactive with them. Just this past week, they said that they're going to have a new engine formula and new chassis in 2027. Where did that come from? Just out of nowhere. They announced that you won't be able to go down below that pit entry line at the Indy 500 this year. So what happened last year with Joseph Newgarden and Marcus Erickson doesn't happen again. And when asked what the penalty was, they were like, ah, ah, we don't know yet. We'll figure that out when we get there. And it's like, why even talk? They do a lot of talking. Just a year ago, they said that their focus was going to be on adding more ovals to the schedule. And now, 12 months later, they said all their focus is adding street courses to the schedule. What is this? What are we doing at this point? Sure, they added Milwaukee and they've also added in, well, now the Nashville Super Speedway. Both of them aren't going to produce very good racing. IndyCar on a short oval is fine, but it doesn't produce very compelling racing for the most part. Iowa is sometimes good, but Joseph Newgarden is going to go out there and win all of these oval races. They need another high-speed oval, much like a Texas or a Michigan or a Kentucky, Chicagoland, Kansas, you name it. 
go there. And instead, they're like Milwaukee. Milwaukee has a long-standing history with IndyCar, but the racing isn't going to be very good, so it's a good thing we're doing a double header there instead. It just feels like every single time we want IndyCar to be better, they decide and they don't want to be any better. They also want to implement a charter system, and Penske's idea for this charter system was to get all the team owners to pay Penske a million dollars, and they take that $20 million and reinvest it in the sport. And like Michael Andretti said, it's going to take way more than $20 million, plus we don't have an interest in the sport, right? Like he has no ownership stake in the sport. This isn't like the NFL where they have the ownership model, where they have a commissioner that represents, you know, all 32 teams, but there's a rev sharing platform in there. There's not that in IndyCar. So like Michael kind of insinuated, why would we give you a million dollars when there's really no point in doing that? Because it doesn't really help us out in the long run. Sure, they might get a charter for a temporary charter system, not even permanent charter system. So there's a lot of things with IndyCar that just continue to lack. And Michael Andretti's right. A lot of these guys never get told no in their life. And is this going to fix anything? Ah, absolutely not. Roger Penske said he wants his grandkids to run IndyCar someday. And honestly, the pace that they're moving at, I don't know if IndyCar will be here by then. If it is, we'll still be using a chassis that was designed in 2012. It's now 2024. That's 12 years for everybody keeping track at home that they're still using the same chassis. And guess what? There's not going to be a new chassis until 2027, which means that that chassis will be 15 years old. It's already old enough to qualify to race in some historic series around the country. And it's still the top tier open wheel domestic chassis in the United States. It's really frustrating. I love IndyCar. I go to the Indianapolis 500 every year. I probably go to two, three, sometimes four IndyCar races a year. I want this series to be good. I want people to watch it. It has great storylines in it. I have a video coming out soon about why you should watch IndyCar because it's phenomenal. It's one of the best racing products you could ask for from a major series. And every single time we want IndyCar to be better, Penske Entertainment's like, we do not. Instead, we would like to do something stupid here and set everybody back just a little bit more. I'm happy that 100 Days of India is back. Unfortunately, nobody's going to watch it. Putting it on Paramount Plus is great, but... I don't know who has Paramount+. Plus. I'm sure a few people out there do. Uh, I just never have. Mission Impossible movies just don't do it for me. Outside of that, though, Penske just doesn't do very much. And Mark Miles can talk all he wants about how we have all these great conversations with different media houses, different television networks, different brands, this and that. Until we see something of substance, something of merit come out, it's all just talk. And that's what it is at the end of the day. So invest the money, don't invest the money. Just do something. Stop talking and just do. That's all I care about. We do a whole lot of talking in IndyCar. Not we. They do a whole lot of talking in IndyCar. And nothing ever happens. I would love for them to just shut up, not talk at all, and then be like, hey, we're doing something awesome. When they're ready to announce it, when they have all the details worked out, when they have everything laid out, then announce it. And we're all like, oh, that's pretty cool. That is cool. I'm glad they did this. And instead, they'll just continue to do the same dumb things that they've always done talk about how they're going to do this, and then proceed to not do it, like always. So Michael's right. Roger Penske should sell IndyCar. Who should he sell it to? I don't care. NASCAR would probably be a great owner of it. I don't love that from an antitrust standpoint, because having every major series in the country be owned by NASCAR, not the best thing in the world. But they have proven with IMSA that they know how to get different manufacturers in there. And honestly, creating a chassis that would be able to hold what they run in GTP cars across the different manufacturers in IMSA and have them be able to also run that same engine platform in IndyCar would go a long way to trying to attract a new manufacturer. It would require a new chassis, sure. But you could likely land two, three new manufacturers. Everybody wants to win the Indianapolis 500. Nobody cares about winning in, well... I was going to, I'm not going to disparage anybody out there. All the IndyCar races are great. The streets of Detroit, no. Nobody cares about winning on the streets of Detroit. Sucks. That's a terrible circuit. I don't like that circuit at all. Either way, do something. Try anything. Just try something for the love of Christ. And instead, we're going to have a million dollar all star race in the desert of California for a bunch of rich people that they couldn't sell tickets to. So they slashed the ticket price from $2,000 to $500 because it was such a poorly planned event. Just, again, on brand for Penske Entertainment's IndyCar. So let me know in the comments. Do you agree with Michael? Should Roger Penske sell it? Who knows? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.